hello, I'm Daniela from Reset Your Body. Okay, so everyone is starting to talk more about the kidneys these days. And why is that? First of all, so many people are affected by kidney disease these days. And finally, medicine is getting better at looking out for the signs and listening to the symptoms more. But here's the thing. We need to start taking more responsibility about what's going on with our bodies. And it's really simple. We all what, know what we need to be doing. And you know it too. We have a dramatic increase in kidney disease. Deaths, like more than double the amount compared to 1990 and is likely to rise because we keep pass passing down our weakened organs to the next generations due to poor lifestyle choices. And that goes literally from generation to generation, it gets weaker and weaker. So it'll only be getting worse. In fact, if you look at some of the figures that have recently been published in Germany um, and probably some other countries, the, um, uh, the life expectancy rate is actually starting to decline. First time in God knows how many years. Almost 500,000 people have been treated for kidney failure by dialysis and transplants about 15 years ago already. And that's been rising steadily ever since. And that's in America alone, by the way. The moment your blood test comes back at 0.6 creatinine, you wanna be sitting up and taking notice. At one, you're, you're going dialysis route. Also, you need to remember that, you, that not only are your kidneys affected, no, straight away, straight away, when your, adrenal, when your kidneys are down, your adrenals are involved also which is why the symptoms are so similar. And don't forget, the adrenals sit right on top of the kidneys. So if one is down, the other follows. So here's what you need to be looking out for. Um, increase the low blood pressure. You should have 120 to 130 over 60 to 70. Those are your ideal values. The lower values for the kidneys and the upper value tells you about the adrenals. Excessive fatigue is another one. It's this struggle to get out of bed and this links straight into your adrenals. You may have sleeping trouble. You will fall asleep but wake up or you know any other disturbance of the sleep rhythm really. Um, your feet or ankle will, ankles will start swelling which may you know progress, it just progresses upwards. And you're starting to accumulate water in there and in some very inconvenient places and it's not regular so it's on one leg or the other and in, in your knee and not on the other and this is due to high inorganic sodium there is there might be a case of forgetfulness and trouble concentrating this is a classic one but it actually stems from a systemic condition called acidosis and that's the reason why your kidneys block up in the first place it basically means that your lymphatic system is backed up to your eyeballs and above pretty much. And then there might be um, nausea or vomiting even. There may be um, pressure from water retention or it could be acidosis in the walls of the digestive tract. You might, have, you might experience decreased appetite or, and unintentional weight loss. You, um, you might have muscle twitching or cramps. It's another sign the adrenals are down actually. And it's not, the kidneys causing the symptoms, but it goes hand in hand. Although allopathy often misses this point, but you need to know these things are connected to your adrenals too. They produce, your adrenals produce your neurotransmitters. So the messages to the nerves to do what they should do. And also it's responsible for your mineral metabolism. And the easiest way to find out if your kidneys are in trouble is to pee in a glass container and check if there are sediments or flakes, or if it is clear or cloudy. And what you do not want is for your pee to be clear. Looking at your pee will tell you at least one of them, one of your kidneys is filtering. Remember, we have two. Some people have three. To find out which side is weaker, or indeed if both sides are weak, you need to take your blood pressure. Any values outside the ones I mentioned means there is something adrift with your kidneys or the adrenals or both. Another sign is um, to have these bags under your eyes in the morning. But with some people, it's all day long and always. That is not good. You always look unhealthy. You always look tired and as though you should be back in bed or just got out of it anyway. When you have your next blood, blood test done, check your creatinine levels. They should never, ever be above 0.6. 
Also, if you have lower back pain, yes, it is a sign that your kidneys might not be happy. This is connected because it comes from the same tissue as we develop from, an, you know, from an embryo. And yes, it is absolutely connected. We need the kidneys to function because it clears out. And this is really important. The kidneys need to function because it clears out the cell waste from the lymphatic system. It is so important. It turns the blood plasma into urine. They play a big role in blood regulation and all bodily fluids. They're a part of your sewer system. And if that backs up, we are in trouble. It's no different to being constantly constipated. Imagine the toxins that you build up in your body and that drown your organs in acidity from inside their own walls. You know, the kidneys are really delicate little things. You could easily, there are two tubes that come out and that go into the bladder and you could easily just twist them like this and break them. But they're also very sensitive to black tea, coffee, high sugar commercial chocolates, and especially soda drinks. If you've ever felt the burn when these sodas come out of you, you know, you've had a lot of Coke, you can really feel it in your urine. They are so acidic. On the pH scale, they're actually not far off battery acids. And these are supposed to hydrate us. Acids never hydrate you, ever. The opposite is true. And you can't even hold these drinks in your mouth for too long. They eat up the mucosa in your mouth. So we send it straight down into our digestive system without even thinking about it. Another sign of kidney problems is bad breath. It's, um, it's an ammonia-like breath, so it's a fishy kind of breath. And that is a definite alarm bell straight away. And by the way, it is estimated that one in eight of us now have a, a, a chronic kidney disease. And about 75% of those don't even know they're in trouble until it is too late. And they go the allopathic route because that's just what many people do. And the end is less than palatable for anybody, including the people close to you or your friends and near and dear ones. So what damages the kidneys or what has been damaging your kidneys? And what will make the kidneys of the generations to come even weaker? It's our Western diet. Wait, bear with me what this means. It's the over availability of food, especially the high fat foods, the high sugar foods and drinks, the excess of red meats, the refined grains, the dairy products, especially processed things. There is no escape from any of those if you go into the supermarket. They are everywhere. Do you know, I recently looked at a, at a label um, of sushi and it made me just so angry and I wanted to throw them all in the trash. They put aspartame in the sushi. It's a neurological poison, but that's not all. It was a dumping ground of a chemical plant. If you read that label, it was disgusting. That garbage has nothing to do with real Japanese sushi. And they put that in the healthy section. What chance do we have? All this stuff impairs our kidneys and this will become a massive problem for all of us, even you. And if you have kids, they will struggle. Table sugar and high fructose corn syrup are now known to raise blood pressure and uric acid. And please note that HFCS, so high fructose corn syrup, is not fructose. Do not buy the witch hunt against fruit. It is the absolute worst fabricated notion about our food ever. Food, fruit sugar is the best sugar for our species, for our cells. It is what we run on. It's our carbon. Nothing moves without carbon. What you may not know is that some of the foods can actually alter the kidneys, animal protein in particular. It makes the kidneys acidic. It increases ammonia and it damages the cell. Plus the evidence keeps rising that animal protein causes colon cancer. In fact, there are so many studies out there, but they're kept very quiet. This is just like it used to be with smoking. The facts were kept quiet as long as possible. We have access to meat everywhere and in everything, even if we don't want it. Just read the labels in the supermarket. You need a magnifying glass to read them, but it pays off to know what awful things go in there. And yet they're allowed to sit on the supermarket shelves and they're deemed safe by the FDA and the international equivalent. Now, 
vegetable protein is different because the effects to our bodies are different. And this has been proven in various double blind peer reviewed studies comparing animal to plant protein. And the evidence became clear. The load on the liver alone was next to nothing with vegetable protein as opposed to the impact animal protein sources had. We now know through various research studies, as though we didn't know that, that our bodies get inflamed when we consume animal protein. Even that has been tested thoroughly to make sure we get this right. Compromised kidneys are often a sign that you are on your way to more chronic diseases such as Hashimoto, hyper or hypothyroid, adrenal fatigue, Graves, and other so-called autoimmune diseases. At the end of the day, the fact remains this. We are sicker than ever before, and we all intuitively know it has to do with our diet and the lies that are being told to us every single day and causing so much confusion, frustration, pain, and suffering. Okay, so what can you actually do? Yes, there's lots of misleading messages out there, but just remember this. If you dissect a man and a gorilla, remove the intestinal tract and put them next to each other, you can't see much of a difference. The motor is the same and it runs on the same thing. It runs on fruits, berries, melons, vegetables, raw and not cooked. That is as simple as it is. There is no simpler, more simple way of looking at all this confusion about the food that's out there. There's, there's two things. One, that is the truth. And two, that is what we want. So the second thing, what we want might not always be that. We might not always want the fruits, the berries, the melons, and the vegetables, raw and not cooked. We might want different things. Now, there are two reasons possible for that. One is that you have the wrong bacteria and the wrong fungus and the wrong worms or whatever it might be inside your body that demand to be fed. Or it is just something that, that you really enjoy that your taste buds have grown used to. You can detox your way out of either of any of these things. The most important thing though is to stay, to have 60, 70, 80% as much as you can based on the diet that your body is meant to be running on. I'm not saying you have to become a raw vegan for the rest of your life. I'm not. I, I just wouldn't. But what I do want you to know and take with you, take away from this video is the comparison between the two motors that run us and what they run best on. So if you put sprouts in the ground or whole seeds, things grow from them. Put flour in the ground, nothing will grow. It is dead food, it has been killed. So we run best on living foods. It is what nature has intended for us. Now I know there are foods you love and want in your life, but do they really taste as good as your health and vitality? Really? If already you don't want to control the addiction that has been deliberately created, just like it used to be with smoking, you can probably get away with it occasionally, as long as you clean out the engine regularly so the body can breathe again and get back into its automatic rhythm of elimination and purging. It is what your body does best. It, doesn't, it just needs some help to do it. Remember you need this body to have any kind of experience here on this planet Earth. We have the food industry working against us, pretty much, well, against our health, maybe not always against our will, but certainly against our health. And the pharma business is still wanting us sick. We are no good if we do not need the medication because they don't, their shareholders don't make money. We have a lot of things going against our best interest. It is very, very hard. So you know how important the kidneys are to you and it's important to be honest to yourself and know that you need to make changes soon to avoid sliding into a disease or deeper into a disease. You know, so many people I speak to would love to turn back time and change their habits just to erase the time of sickness that they've had to experience and endure so far. The most sensible thing is to prevent this from happening to you. And unless you make a change, nothing will change. You need to first find out what is really going on in your body. You need to look at the symptoms in your entire body, even if they seem unrelated. You need the right plan to get you out of the situation quickly and long-term and learn how you can do this 
on your own afterwards. So don't go for a 70 lightweight juice cleanse and think you're done. If your kidney is in trouble, you need to do something more, something with impact. The foods that you need to go to are fruits, berries, melons, salads, and vegetables, at least for a certain period of time until you have cleansed out the system. Then you can add back in some more foods, some other foods that you really want. But you do need to know this. You need to get the help of an expert. Don't wing this. There is a reason why people keep struggling with ill health, scouring all the Facebook groups, just to be told, try this or try that and nothing ever works. Don't go down that path, it doesn't work. The true magic lies with herbs, always has done. Herbs that heal and that are safe and gentle and harmless, but extremely powerful for our body. They're on this planet for us, to serve us. The people who've been cured by herbs goes into millions and it has lasted for thousands of years. We just cannot beat nature. Herbs help speed up the cleansing and the healing process 10, 20 fold, if not more. If nothing else, remember bitter is better for your kidneys especially, for your um, hepatic system. Have dandelion greens and arugula salads and astringent fruit. And if you just have a light one-off infection, do not go in and carpet bomb your system with an antibiotic. Take Demano's sugar caps, pure, nothing mixed in, no, nothing, just Demano's sugar. But when you've cleansed the kidneys and the adrenals back up and running, this is when you avoid going back to a place where severe chronic conditions can easily get the better of you. You can avoid the symptoms that reduce your life quality by 50% or more sometimes. But the main thing has to be prevention of further chronic conditions that will make the healing process longer and longer and a lot harder. It is an investment in your body to be well and to be able to experience life the way you should, 100%. So if you want to get your body in a state of being well and perfect for you to get on with your life instead of having to focus on disease, then you need to take your first step and then keep going towards that goal. And if you want to find out how to do this and what it actually entails for you personally, because everyone is not the same, we should have a conversation soon. And, you know, we'll talk about your health concerns and what it would take to help you help your body heal itself. You can get in touch with me via private message, m.me forward slash reset your body now, or via the website, danielaryweiss.com forward slash apply. And you can book a conversation with me there. As always, thank you for watching this video. Leave your comments below. Tell us if you liked it by giving it a thumbs up and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.